Now that we've reviewed those greater than, less than statements where we get the logicals, the zero or ones, now we're ready to cover if statements. So this is when you can really get some logic into your code. And when you get logic into your code, you can make different paths in your code. You can do a bunch of different things. Okay, so once you get this, you'll be able to do a lot more than you have been able to up until this point. So before we get into actual if statements, let's think about a scenario. All right, and I try to come up with one that everybody can probably relate to. So let's think about being on a budget. You're on a college student budget, for example, and you have to go buy a new shirt for some reason. All right, so you go to the mall and you find two shirts that you really like. So one shirt is $30, right, which is not too bad. And then the other one that you really like is $100. Now remember, you're on a budget here. So you have a choice. You can either buy the cheaper shirt or you can buy the expensive shirt. Okay, so that's going to give you two potential paths that you can take, right? Because if you buy the cheaper shirt and you only spend $30, you might have a little extra money, you know, to buy something else that month. If you buy this expensive shirt for $100, you're not going to have any extra money for the month. So you're going to, you know, probably have to make some changes until you get paid again. All right, so you got two different paths to take and you have to choose between one. So if statements are gonna be designed for those kind of you know, situations where you have you know, multiple paths you can take and you've got a true false decision. So kind of like a yes or a no decision. So that's what if statements are gonna be used for. And that's how it allows you to really create a lot of different branches in your code, do a lot more things. So let's get into if statements. There we go. Okay. So our if statements, this is how we're going to set these up. All right. So first line we're going to have in our if statement is we'll have the word if. And then after that, we're going to have our expressions with those uh, relational operators that we talked about before. So these will be the checks to see if something is greater than or equal to if it's you know exactly equal to something if it's not equal you'll have all of those test statements right here okay and they're going to go right after the if term all right and then underneath that you'll do your calculations or your action statements so your action statements are what you're going to do if this expression is true okay and then to end the if block you're going to use the word end So, so now these two match. So your relational expressions, those, like I said, are used to do the true-false test. Okay, so in order to get in here to this block of code to do these calculations, this expression has to be true. So if this turns out to be false, these actions here will not be taken. MATLAB will just totally skip over them and then it goes to this end statement, and then it goes to the next line of code. All right. And some example action statements, you could do plots. You could print out data using fprintf. You could generate data files, do calculations with equations, all sorts of stuff. Okay. But like I said, if this expression is false, you're going to skip all of these calculations and actions and go right to end. So you gotta think about that when you set up your if statements. Your actions will happen if the statement is true. All right, so we just have this is blue, so the blue, let's just put this under here. All right, so that's what we're talking about with your action statements. Just things you wanna do if your statement is true. All right, so let's go do this example. So this kind of goes back to our shirt problem that we were talking about at the beginning, and we did some coding for it. So here we've got a retail store. They're updating their prices because they've got a sale going on, and all shirts over $35 are gonna be 25% off. So we need to figure out if a shirt should be discounted, and if it should be discounted, what should the sales price be? All right, 
So we've got a couple of different paths here. The shirt's either going to be on sale or it's not going to be on sale. If it's on sale, you got to calculate that new sales price. Otherwise, you don't have to do anything. All right, so two different branches. So first, we need to input the price of the shirt. So that's our first line, get price. Okay. And then we're going to do a check on it. So we're going to say if the price is greater than 35, so if this statement is true, we need to calculate the sales price. So here is our calculation. So the sale price is just going to be price times 0.75 because we said the sale would be 25% off. Whoops, there we go. And then once we get the sale price calculated, we can do F print F. All right, so then you can display that sales price. All right, so it'll say sales price at 25% off is put the dollar sign and then percent dot two F. Remember this dot two means two digits past the decimal place. And then we have slash n, so it moves the cursor to the next line. Okay, and then you're going to have the n statement. And notice that this is all indented. This line here is just continued from up here. I just couldn't fit it all in one line. Um, that's why it's down here. But MATLAB will automatically indent your lines inside of the if statement. Okay, now if you run this, this is what it looks like. So if we say enter the price of the shirt and I put $40, then my lab's going to say the sales price at 25% off is $30. Okay? So, so it'll tell you the price of the shirt if it needs to be on sale. Otherwise, it's going to skip over all of that completely. All right? So if I would have put in here a shirt of $10, none of this would have been done. Okay? It would have checked it and it would have said if 10 is greater than 35, that would have been a false statement. So it would have just gone to the end statement and then moved to the next line of code if we had more code. Okay. So let's hold off on this. Let's go to the examples and we'll return to slide six in the next video.